and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Front Creek Correspondent, Karma Craig. As we close out the school year, we take a look back at students doing good in the community, getting real world experiences, and preparing for the future. Plus, we have these student stories. Front Creek teacher, Mr. Hawes, teaching the kids how to get their hands dirty in his desktop publishing class. A rescue group named Raptor Rehab came to Ballard High School to talk to zoology students about their job in rescuing birds. Students showcased their service learning projects at an exposition at DuPont Manual High School. Their work included working with food insecurities and healthcare access. We're at Manual High School today. I am actually a teacher at the J. Graham Brown School. And so our two schools came together for curbing food insecurity and hunger in the world and access to health care. For International Medical Corps, we went around asking for donations to help and collected $853 to give. We went to Baxter Community Center. And with there, we had less fortunate kids come into the center and we fed them food. And then while they were eating, we provided them with entertainment and things to do. And then for our global project, we did um, chores, and we do them separately or together. And all the allowance we got from the chores, we donate to um, Actions Against Hunger. We sold hot chocolate and we sold popcorn at school for Dare to raise money for a whale in South Sudan. And we also worked with Dare to Care. This is a culmination of the entire year's work. So all the students are displaying the service work that they've done on their boards and reflections of their work. Um, why they did it, why they think that they've made change. So it's really to teach each other and for people in the local community to know what they're up to. I think this is important because it teaches you how to communicate with community partners and it gets you into the world of volunteering. Service learning is what the world is all about. Touching either other people's lives and making sure that we're all working towards the common goal. We were able to see how big of an impact that not having access to healthcare had. Uh, creating the project and volunteering was always great because firstly we got the benefit of volunteering at different locations and raising money. 14 and 15 year olds, that's largely what this group is and they have literally fed people throughout the world because of the work they did this year. I think it'll help me be a better citizen because when you think about all the people in the world who have problems, like who go through things and just think about how fortunate you are, you want to give back, especially with food insecurities. It's a lot of people in the world who don't eat and who need things. They're amazing because these kids were completely in charge of their projects. Um, so they came up with what they were going to do. They built connections with local community members and international community members. It was not teacher driven, it was student driven and they have reached out to all sorts of groups that I didn't even know necessarily existed. I'm not just standing there teaching, they're teaching me every day. And I'm so, so lucky to get to work with these kids. At Fairdale High School, students partnered with the group Love the Hungry and packaged 10,000 meals. So you put it under the tunnel, and Charnasia is gonna scoop some uh, dry vegetables. She's gonna drop that in. Shaylee's gonna put some soy in. Tim's gonna put rice in. Today, uh, we're working with Love the Hungry Association, and we're packing 10,000 meals that is going to three different countries, Haiti, South Sudan, and Guatemala to feed hungry children around the world. Love the Hungry is a local organization. It's a famine relief organization, and they partner with non-governmental organizations all across the globe. Believe me, you won't have any trouble making 10,000 meals, okay? And get groups like us to raise money and fund the event that we do. I always like to give back to the community and when I saw the opportunity to actually give back to uh, other countries which is outside, it was just a great uh, opportunity because there's so many children that are suffering and, and if we can give back from here, then we should totally do it. You're gonna put it in here and the team that's gonna be down here, they're gonna take it and get you know, the rice pushed down a little and then we're gonna seal it in this. One of the first jobs is scooping up rice and dehydrated vegetables. Uh, another job is putting the plastic package under the funnel so that it can catch all the stuff that goes in. Everyone can be a leader if they just put their mind to it and, and like actually go out there and help out. I believe it's helping you have more compassion for your, you know, fellow humans. And then for me, like it's like a personal experience because about two years ago I was homeless and you know, it's important to make sure that you know you show kindness because you never know when you can be in that situation and you want someone to show kindness to you. It certainly uh, sparked in me a feeling that I want to keep doing this. I want to keep working and it, when I grow up then I will 
totally like keep working with people who do this kind of stuff. And I know our school is proud that our students want to give back and they'll do the work to make sure that happens. We make 10,000 meals and each package is six meals, which makes me happy because you know, you, it's suffering to be hungry. It's really sad and you know, no one wants to go through that nor do I want to see it. So I want to make sure that they can get the nutrients and the vitamins that they need to grow up to be big, healthy and strong so they can do something with their life. Students at the J. Graham Brown School have researched Kentucky veterans from World War II. The information that they found have been profound and moving. Yeah, it was really cool. One of mine was in that too. We are at the J. Graham Brown School and this project is a project to honor World War II uh, soldiers from Kentucky. This is called the Kentucky Boys Project and pretty much we were given three soldiers um, that were buried in either Florence or Sicily and mine were buried in Florence and we were only given their names uh, the day they died and the division that they were in. I ended up having to take a picture from a yearbook. It's about researching our um, soldiers that were from Kentucky that died in World War II. You had just a tiny amount of information at the start and then everything else was up to you. So we had like a loose rubric, but everything was, we all had the same assignment, but everything turned out so differently. Well, this project was based upon a visit I took with students in 2011 on a World War II trip, and we went to the Ardennes Cemetery, which is in Belgium. And this cemetery um, had, um, I think, 3,000 soldiers, and I thought, my God, some of these boys never had family members to ever come see them. It really brings kind of like a personal aspect into um, learning about World War II, and um, it kind of made me relate with uh, the soldiers that I learned about. We had to find all the information on our own, which is very difficult because if you think about it, all the information that we had to find was from such a long time ago. Robert was awarded the American Campaign Medal and the World War II Victory Medal. It is to document um, every Kentucky boy that is buried in Europe or in Asia from, that, were, that were killed in World War II. Last year was my junior year and we did a similar project where we studied the soldiers from uh, the graves in Belgium and so we went to two grave sites and we were able to walk through the um, graves and it was so breathtaking, it was so silent and we just walked through the graves and we were able to put the Kentucky flags on the graves. When I got to my soldier I was like oh my gosh like this is the soldier that I studied and it was like a connection that we had. Most of these soldiers that we researched were so young they were our age and I couldn't imagine going into war at my age and I guess finding out what they had to endure is just crazy to think about. It helps me really understand what people have had to go through and how, I guess, fortunate I am. You research this person and then how they died, and some of those stories are really shocking. And it's like, wow, they were my age when they went into this war. Like, that could be me or that could be my brother or something. Like, that's crazy to like feel these people's pains and these families' pains. Uh, I feel like it's, it's a way to make it real. So this project really put an emphasis on, like it's actually a real world thing instead of like just another project that you do for school for your teacher, like it actually leaves a mark on you. My grandpa's brother was killed at St. Lowe in France and so actually it made everything more real for me because it was really emotional because my grandpa served in Vietnam but his brother was killed in World War II horrible realities of war into real perspective. It makes history real and it puts them in the middle of something that happened a long time ago. And they realize that history is in history. Correspondent Gianna Webb shows us how one teacher is combining writing with agriculture in his desktop publishing class. Desktop publishing is a class that focuses on urban agriculture skills, so learning how to garden um, out in our School garden, we have about 30 raised beds. We've got chickens out there. Um, and in the classroom, we focus on um, kind of building community within the school, um, but also within the classroom. What's most important to me is getting kids outside and doing things that are hands on, um, knowing that they can take the skills um, outside of the four classroom walls and um, apply them once they get outside or out of high school. Garden Club is, gives me an opportunity to intern during the summer and I'll be coming here taking care of the garden, making sure everything's okay. I'll be able to get the eggs, make sure everything is going well. 
we get involved more rather than just sitting and listening to the teacher talk over a PowerPoint. We get involved in the garden and we'll go out and help the chickens or work with the plants and learn how to plant and then we'll write about it. We'll get more, we'll do more research about different problems environmentally around the world and propose different ideas to fix it. If you can get students to see that the skills that we're teaching in the classroom have application outside of it and bring people in that are actually doing the work and they see that um, they could actually make a career out of this, then the learning just goes up tenfold. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Gianna Webb. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. JCPS serves over 100,000 students, and with that, a lot of waste is generated. We need to do our part to recycle because it conserves natural resources, help the environment, and save money. When we recycle, we put less coal and gases into the power plant, which reduces the amount of toxins in the atmosphere. We are JCPS, and we recycle. Yeah! yeah. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Fur Creek High School correspondent Karma Craig. The University of Louisville partnered with students at Portland Elementary School. The students sold lemonade on campus and got a lesson in business management. We need four lemonade, please. This Hold is uh, Lemonade Day. We have our fifth grade students here from Portland Elementary. Right, so there you go. Thank you. And basically, the students are learning business skills. You know, how do we market our product? Um, all about the money, the budgeting. Um, how do we get people to our business? Where do you see all the people? Well, like over there. Okay, how are you going to get those people to come oh. over here? Would you like to mess with your wine lemonade? Come on down, little luxurious lemonade. It's not going good. I was dancing earlier and I got two customers. Those dudes with the arrow sign jobs that flip them around. Pretty easy. Should sign up for that one. Do you want just regular strawberries or ice and strawberries? So this is strawberries, strawberry lemonade up here with ice in it. This is just regular with ice, and then we need some that has regular with no ice and strawberries. Just working as a team, collaborating, communication skills, problem solving. Let's just do like a Saturday that has lemons and a side that doesn't have lemons. Oh, so they can choose from. What's wonderful is we have a partnership through Elevate Portland with the business school and the business school has come out and they have worked with our students phenomenally. It's teaching us how to handle our own business. We had to plan out um, like our posters, we had to draw posters, we had to see who was doing what and then we kind of made ideas as we were doing this. This is real world application. Um, you know, we could sit in a classroom all day and, and do math, but if the students don't, don't know how to apply that outside of the classroom, then what are we really teaching them? So this is just real world application at its finest. Did y'all put ice in these already? Um, yeah. For them to actually be on campus has been amazing to watch. They have been so excited just to see the students on campus, even to ask the students here. Um, of course, now that they've been here, they all say they want to come to L. So it's just been exciting to watch how excited they get about seeing the students. We are Portland Elementary. We are JCPS. Seneca High School celebrated student selection into the Academies of Louisville. Everyone opened an envelope to find out their destination. I would like to welcome you to the first ever Freshman Career Pathway Selection Assembly. We are at Seneca High School today where we just had our first ever Freshman Academy Career Selection Assembly. You are going to be different than all of the classes that came before you. You are going to have opportunities to earn college credits to work in places that are interesting to you. I am in IT and law, and I love it because it gets me 
like prepared for the real world and what I really want to do. I am currently in teaching and learning pathway, which is uh, the basics of learning, and I am then the early childhood pathway, which is special education, what is actually what I want to major in. Turn around and remove the envelope from the back of your chair, but do not open it. Do not open it. On the count of three, you will all open your envelopes at once. One, two, three. Congratulations, Kayla Ritchie. You have been selected for the Cyber Engineering Pathway in Law and IT Academy. I always wanted to be a singer, but uh, my next pathway is to be a lawyer. What we are hoping is that the academy structure um, builds a network of support around each scholar. So not only do they have a team of teachers who are working to build on their interest and to ignite passion and get them excited about school, but also to involve our community members and involve our scholars in the community. Does anybody have any questions in terms of Montreal team tryouts for next year? We're totally engaged with Seneca. All of our employees, all 700 of us, have bought into this school. And with tremendous leaders, great scholars, we know that everyone shares our passion, so we have that link in common. And we know we can make a difference. We can find health care workers. More importantly, though, we can work together to figure out how we can better serve the community. Most people, like, they go to school whenever, they don't get that extra step. I feel like here, being at Seneca, I get that extra step. So before I even have to go to college and try to figure out what I want to do in life, spend tons of money, I get that hands-on on education here right now so I can decide what I want to be in life. Correspondent Payne Finley takes us to the freshman signing ceremony at Pleasure Ridge Park High School. It's important to celebrate the freshmen. They've been through the Freshman Academy. They've been the, the initial group to go through the Academy's Louisville model. Um, we wanted to celebrate that. It was kind of a call to get involved at PRP. So we want them to be involved in extracurriculars. We want them to be involved in their pathways and their academies. And that was a good way to do that. It is very important to have fun. I hope that they see the importance of giving their all for the next four years in high school to prepare themselves for the next level. Abigail, all good? Portland, all good? I feel like the ceremony encouraged us that we can do something beyond high school, that we can get through high school. I'm Pleasure Ridge Park correspondent Payne Finley reporting for our kids. Students from Lincoln Performing Arts School use their acting skills for a video shoot on a campaign to hire bus drivers. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you this morning. We're at Lincoln Performing Arts School and I'm super excited about this opportunity. We are using real bus drivers, real students. And our job is to recruit more community heroes like Miss Hood. We are shooting a commercial that's going to run next year to encourage other folks to come on board and be a bus driver and to support the community. And action. Good morning, Miss Hood. You yeah. have to like talk to the bus driver and like say like good morning. We have to um, wait in a line and then when you walk up to the bus driver, you can say good morning or something nice. It actually is a good acting experience. It's just it can help you along the way. But it also is just a good way to have fun. Good morning. How was your weekend? It was great. Thanks for asking. Good morning, Ms. Hoy. We have 1,500 community heroes on the road each and every day serving 70,000 students, driving 95,000 miles, and 24,000 different bus stops. And our job is to recruit, attract, and retain more community heroes. It's gonna be a great day. How about your day? This is a great retirement job for me because I have lots of days off. So um, I really love it. The pay is outstanding and the benefits are just beyond anything that you can believe. Somebody at my age being able to be in this position and and be so blessed with this job, um, I really love it. Our job is to drive the future. We worked with Lincoln Performing Arts School. These students are local celebrities. We're super excited to use them again, and they're very excited to be a part of the commercial. To be able to drive, be around children, um, it, just is, it just makes my heart happy every day. Guys, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much. It is a very fulfilling job. Good job, give yourself a round of applause there. 
Correspondent Samuel Stewart introduces us to the chess team at Fern Creek Elementary School. Some schools have clubs like Quick Recall or Art, but at Fern Creek Elementary, they have chess. It was started two years ago by Carmelita Weekly. What I like about chess is uh, it, it just horns on so many things that the kids are doing. Uh, it helps them with their problem solving skills. It helps them to be focused. Especially when they're playing the game, they can concentrate and they have to know how to move, when not to move. And all that equates in their academics, okay? Uh, they can take those skills that they learned and uh, they can use them in their personal life and they can use them in their academics as well. The chess team includes students from the third, fourth, and fifth grade. Fifth grader Trey talks about his chess experience. My name's Trey, I'm in fifth grade. I joined the chess club in second grade. I started playing chess in first grade. Fourth grader Ariana also talks about her time in the chess club. And I started playing chess. What I like about chess is that you get to play, like, you get to play people, like, around your grade, and you get to see, like, how they play, and you can learn from how they play. And we also play each other, and if we make a mistake or something, we get to learn from that mistake so we don't do it again in the future. Along with it being a super cool and fun program, the kids that play are also exceptionally good. They finished second during the competitions this year. And for our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Samuel Stewart. We have more great stories about JCPS. Stay with us. We get, on a weekly basis, we have deliveries from Courtney Farms. We get uh, watermelons. We get different peppers. Uh, she's delivered broccoli each week. Then we have Leeds Gardens. He delivers peppers, corn on the cob, uh, banana squash puree. And then we have Mr. Ayers, who's Ayers Orchards. He delivers different varieties of apples. So we get red and yellow watermelons from Courtney Farms and Jones Brothers weekly. On the apples, we probably do 125 cases a week. The watermelons, we've been running around right about 400 cases a week. We get squash and zucchini. And then blueberries, we ended up getting 300, which those all went straight to our schools. So it does make a difference in the numbers. I think it cuts down on produce from out of the state of Kentucky, and it's bringing our numbers up where it's local. Kentucky proud. Usually the yellow ones come in two to a case. The red ones are usually four to a case. Welcome back to our kids. I'm Fur Creek High School's correspondent, Karma Cray. A no middle school student has been named the National Evite Birthday Hero. Let's meet Olivia. Hi, I'm Olivia, and I'm a seventh grader at No Middle School. I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine. Some men say that I'm intense or I'm insane. I definitely enjoy the arts program here. Um, that's one of the most fun things about being here at No. I am very passionate about musical theater, and so I'm hoping that that's um, in the future. That wasn't too much. I have a nonprofit called Girls Giving for Good, and one of the things we do is connect other local nonprofits in need of service. And so, you Spiritus, which is one of our nonprofit partners, they uh, house children who come from ne neglection and difficult backgrounds, and we make we made birthday kits for them so they could have birthday parties and celebrate their birthday. And Evite had also been starting this new campaign called Birthday Hero to celebrate their 20th birthday. And they wanted to honor me as their first official birthday hero as a kickoff for the campaign this year. It's my passion and it's something that I like to do and I like to be there for people and help out in the community. I think that other kids my age seeing me doing these things at, my, at 13 years old will inspire them to follow their dreams and do what they want no matter how old they are or what time in their life it is. Price Elementary School students got exercise and learned about local history as they created their own derby parade. We have an annual derby parade. Our students are celebrating the derby and we are arts magnet school so each group has a theme that they have developed over the course of a, a couple of weeks. I have my hot air balloon because sometimes the derby people go and have air balloons at there. 
also this year invited neighboring schools like Rangeland, Newburgh Middle School, and uh, more high schools here. And we also have members from our community that are represented here. Lots of fun today. Happy Derby, everyone. So we are really excited, and we want you all to enjoy how we do the Derby the Price Way. We work really hard to make sure that our students are academically prepared for um, our future and we also are excited for them to have an opportunity to get ready for state testing. So we've been working really hard and this is the time for us to just kind of unplug and have a good time and enjoy each other. Ballard High School students had the chance to get an up-close look at Raptors in Recovery. Correspondent Timothy DePore brings us the story. So, at Raptor Rehabilitation of Kentucky, we take in sick, injured, and orphaned birds of prey. The message of helping birds of prey came to Ballard High School recently. At Ballard in zoology class with Ms. Kell, there was Raptor Rehab came in and they informed us on birds and what had happened to them and how they rehabilitate them to be able to release them back in the wild. Grace is a red-tailed hawk. Normally, red-tailed hawks have an absolutely gorgeous red tail. There was a turkey vulture that came in, and he had been hit by a car because they're, they like to get roadkill. And so he hurt his left wing, and he broke his wing. There was a horned owl who came in. Her name was Luna. She had, been, had a pecked eye. Her left eye was missing. Students say they learned how important raptors are to the ecosystem. People should care because birds really help in our community and ecosystem, and if we neglect them, then populations of rodents and things could go way up. Being raptors, they do eat mice, voles, crickets, anything pretty much that moves, and birds. I'm Ballard correspondent Timothy DePore for Our Kids. Thanks for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed it. This is the crew from Fern Creek that has helped us put this show together. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting Our Kids. Woo! Woo! I turned too far, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Take it off a little bit. We have more great stories. Stay tuned. Go for it. I'm so sorry. Okay. We have great. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I forgot. Okay, I didn't know if that was in. I noticed it like as it's coming out. I switched the brown and bow. Your eyebrows right? messed up. Oh, nice. Okay. I kept on getting tongue tied by that invention convention. Yeah. <laughs> Sam's gonna mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>